F122 took the Formula 1 games in a new direction with the inclusion of an F1 Life hub area where you can decorate your apartment and choose what casual clothes your driver is seen in. The game also added supercars to the roster of vehicles in F122 and a soundtrack with licensed EDM songs. Regardless of your opinion on these inclusions, it wasn't a direction that most fans asked for the Formula 1 games to head in. So we at the race have put our heads together to draw up a list of features we would like to see in future F1 games. And of course, be sure to put down in the comments your thoughts on our suggestions and what else you would like to see added in upcoming F1 games. F1 2021 introduced online two-player career, meaning you can share the experience of a career mode, car upgrades and all, with a friend. Emphasis on a friend, since our online career mode experience has capped to just two players. Regular online lobbies can handle more players than that, so why not career mode? Imagine the fun that could be had if you had a group of friends all in one shared career mode game save. You could all go through the same shared experience of car development, switching teams and championship battles over the course of multiple seasons. There is a risk that opening up online career like this gives EA a route into creating F1's version of Ultimate Team and that opens up the whole microtransaction can of worms everyone has been so wary of since EA took over Codemasters. But expanding online career without adding microtransactions would be a ton of fun. Of course, the arrival of F1 Manager 2022 will fill the team management void that currently exists in the F1 games, but that doesn't mean more couldn't be done on that front in EA and Codemasters series. Firstly, a simple change would be the ability to hire two drivers for your team rather than having yourself in as a driver manager. Not only would it be more realistic, but it would make simulating races have more meaning as the ability of both of your drivers matters, as well as their salaries. If you want to race, then no problem as you just take control of one of your drivers. It would also be great if the provided race simulations were more detailed than how they are currently. For example, you could take control mid-race if you see one of your drivers performing badly. That might sound like an unrealistic addition, but it's already a feature in EA's other sports games. Or instead, let's take a leaf out of the book of some other yearly racing game franchises. Let's add in the ability to run your own junior team. The MotoGP games let you run your own teams in Moto3 and Moto2, and you can watch the races unfold while still being able to compete as a MotoGP rider yourself. So let's bring in Formula 2 and maybe even Formula 3 team management into the My Team game mode. It's very easy to sit here and just go, do that again but better. But there are definitely ways in which F1-2021's Breaking Point Story Mode could be improved. For example, more choices other than just who you drive for. A longer period of time in Formula 2 rather than having two seasons in Formula 1. More characters on screen rather than simply relegated to phone conversations and more action outside of the Formula 1 paddock. The team dinner scene was a standout point in the story and not just because it was when Casper Ackerman and Aidan Jackson aired their grievances to one another. It was a rare moment of character development but it was also the only time a section of story took place not at a Formula 1 venue. Given the recent upturn in interest from Hollywood in Formula 1, there is room to do more with a story mode if the ambition is higher than it was for Breaking Point. Or, of course, you could lean into the sport's decades-long history for a story mode. Classic cars may have been taken out of the games in the past couple of years, but an easy way to tell a compelling and non-cliché story is to retell one of Formula 1's many great title fights. The normal objection to this is the complications of licensing an entire grid of cars, teams and drivers and circuits from a previous season. That may be the sad reality, but it also shouldn't be completely impossible. One of the major selling points for MotoGP 22 was its 9 season 2009 story which recaps Valentino Rossi's final championship winning year. Archive footage is used in between gameplay sections, making it more like an interactive documentary. 
Older Formula 1 games had scenario modes which weren't carried by an overarching narrative, but they did present players with unique circumstances, sometimes loosely based on a historic Grand Prix, and they had a requirement for a certain finishing position. A complementary story isn't essential, but Formula 1 has a rich history and it would be such a waste to not make use of it in a licensed Formula 1 game. This wouldn't be a totally new inclusion as Codemasters have implemented them before. In the transition to the 8th generation of consoles though, red flags didn't make the cut and haven't been seen since. To be fair, it's not as if they were implemented perfectly in the older titles, the games were extremely reluctant to deploy the red flag and basically only did so if the entire width of the track was blocked. If you didn't play the game seriously though, you could end up having some real fun with this, causing cars to get disqualified, get the red flag waved and then have a race restart with just 4 cars on the grid, potentially even less than that. In all seriousness though, a more realistic inclusion of the red flag, meaning that it would get waved for particularly heavy shunts or really heavy rain, would add a layer of complexity and jeopardy to the races that would make them more exciting and more reflective of many recent real life Grand Prix. Codemasters explored different race formats and rule sets in F1 2017 through the underwhelmingly titled Championships mode. That included championships with both sprint and feature races with different points distributions for both races, essentially a Formula 2 race weekend format, championships with double points for the final round, classic car championships using an older F1 point system, and even series where the starting grids were initially decided at random before lining the drivers up in reverse championship order after the first round. That allows for some truly unique races which can be drastically different from what you normally experience in an F1 game and can produce some unlikely race winners. F1 2021 and F1 have the ability to race with equal performance cars in Grand Prix mode which is a step in the right direction and in some ways better than the championships mode ever was as you have completely free control over the circuits and race distances. You can even have an entire season of sprint race weekends if you want, but why not add even more tools for players to create their own races as realistic or outlandish as they want. Along a similar vein, having more customization options in career mode would add a lot of replayability and potentially a lot of excitement if you could alter it to your heart's content. There is already the acclaim, money and resource point earning rates which is a good start but really that's just scratching the surface of what you could do. How about forcing drivers into retirement or being able to manually tweak their or the team's attributes, forcing certain driver transfers maybe to align with future announcements, being able to alter race formats or enact rule changes at will. It's not an unfounded suggestion for a sports game or even an EA developed sports game as titles they've made for other sports have implemented some of those ideas already. Even if they're not career mode specific they let you alter the teams in a way that you simply cannot do on the F1 games or at the very least without dabbling with user made mods. Historic Formula 1 content is a bit of a recurring theme in this list. In fairness though we are fans of the Formula 1 games because we're fans of Formula 1 itself, and the games can always benefit from leaning more on the sport's history. F1 2013 had four no longer used F1 tracks, Jerez, Brands Hatch, Estoril and Imola, and they could all be raced around using the included classic cars or even the modern F1 cars. Formula 1 left behind those four circuits a long time ago for various reasons and it's unlikely that the bigger and faster Formula 1 cars we see today are ever going to revisit the likes of Brands Hatch, especially after an over 30 year long absence. But that just gives all the more reason to make it possible to do in an F1 game since any safety or financial considerations go completely out of the window. Or even more recent examples like Istanbul Park and Sepang. These were fan favourites and have been used far more recently in real life. 
There's no reason why the latest generation of Formula 1 cars couldn't put on an, an action-packed race at either of those venues, and if it won't happen in real life, then at least let us live out that fantasy in the virtual world. If you've got your own suggestion on classic circuits you'd like to see revisited in a modern F1 game, then be sure to put it down in the comments. The classic cars were just thrown into the older F1 games really just to appeal to long-time fans of the sport, but once you drill down into the experience of racing with them, the appeal washes away somewhat. You could race multiple different models at once, which was a visual and audible marvel, but didn't necessarily create good racing action given the wildly different performance levels and traits of each car. The solution to that was to have everyone race in the same car, which ensures the field will be bunched up, but a bit too bunched up since the performance level of every car is identical. If everyone is in Mika Hakkinen's 1998 championship winning McLaren, you're not recreating a typical 1998 Grand Prix, but rather a race where everyone is in Hakkinen and Coulthard's car. And it looks like that too. Licensing that dreaded word would, as we've already previously mentioned, end any hopes of having a full grid of classic cars, but then why not just have some cars in randomly generated livery so at least you get the variety of colours on show? And why not make a special dedicated game mode out of the classic cars? Back when the series had cars dating all the way back to the 1970s, these could have been incorporated into a mode where you had to play through every year represented in the game experiencing the rapid pace of car development through the eras and earning achievements along the way. We appreciate that the developers probably had lots of data on how little the classic cars were used, which made the effort and cost required to license them hard to justify. What do you think? Is there anything on your F1 game wishlist that we didn't include in this video? If so, then be sure to let us know down in the comments and subscribe to The Race for more videos on the world of Formula 1.